So, Jenny, here we are. Ah. So we walked, oh, we haven't checked. Anyway, we burned 1,338 calories walking down to the first campsite down from the rim. Uh, and we ran into, let's see what it will come out like. We ran into the threat of a thunderstorm and they said they're serious and fast. So, uh, we, uh, we were told there was water near the campsite. <laughs> now, okay, first problem was near, that's like 0.2 kilometers, I think. Um, the next thing was, it's a spring, which is the size of a three gallon bucket <laughs> and about the same depth. But when I, you can tell that the water is overflowing and trying to run away and there's some soggy mud after it. So I've been there twice to fill stuff up and I'm not emptying the spring. It, it's, water's obviously still coming up, but what a long way to bring the water. And then uh, uh, you burn a lot of calories going to and fro, and then you get thirsty and have to have a big gulp of water. But we're filtering it and I've tasted some, you should taste some Jenny. It's well worth coming this long a hike to have filtered spring water. It well, it took something. us like a, at least half hour to find the water. Yes. <laughs> we thought that we couldn't find water. And then I went and back. We had to just hike back. But then I went back, having marked the trail with a yeah. bunch of sticks, found where you go off the trail to find the spring. I found the muddy bog and couldn't find the spring and I thought this is silly. So I went and found the other way that we came in originally the long way to come in and find the spring. You had to come in at the right angle or you didn't see it. So even I, we marked and it even though we good. marked the point on the trail and I should yes. have recognized every stick in the in the bit off the trail. It's tiny, tiny It's pot. so hidden. <laughs> I don't know about the next person that comes here. <laughs> They're gonna have the same problem. Okay. So uh Oops. <clears throat> so this is day two of our holiday. Maybe uh, <laughs> I should start. So we jumped on a jet from Toronto and uh, uh, that was at nine o'clock at night. Flew to Las Vegas. They uh, made up time, which we didn't need because we had a car reservation to pick up a rental car at midnight. So we saved that day's rental. So we get there, we had to sit and wait to get in the lineup until midnight, otherwise you pay an extra day's rental. Then we started driving to Bryce Canyon, which was supposed to be a four hour drive. We made it neat. We had to keep stopping and having naps, having coffee, I don't know, we managed to take eight hours. So then we make it to the park, to the visitor center, for 10 after eight, they open at eight. We wanted to get a campsite and you can't book more than 48 hours in advance. So we got our campsites and we've walked down to the first one, camped there, we had a horrific rainstorm wind and then it was really really cold all night <laughs> and uh, we're wearing raincoats not for the rain because we have them and we need to wear everything we've got <laughs> <laughs> well this is a rich what do you call this, tra uh, this trail what oh Riggs Springs Trail yeah. and this campsite we liked because they said it has a reliable spring near it, and they don't really tell you where it is. So we had a uh, map on our phone that actually showed a little creek running from where the spring was supposed to start, and uh, we were able to locate where the spring should have been. It wasn't there because it dried up, but it started again uh, about 200 meters away. So. We started walking down this access road that was on the map that uh, where it showed that the spring uh, should have been there. 
go uh, the, tr the creek should have been there. And uh, at one point I went in and I found some mud, wet mud, in the form of a little tiny creek. So we went up and found it. It's about the size of a three gallon pail. And you could dip your glass in, get some spring water, and then we put it through the filter and we had drinking water. So today, we had two choices. Continue around the loop run, uh, 12 kilometers when we get back, get back to the car, move the car to another access point and go down to tonight's, uh, tonight's campsite. No, it's the same, same point. You don't move the car. Oh, we don't move the car, yeah. We just get to it and then continue on. But that's an awful lot of kilometers. 18 kilometers in one day. We generally don't do more than 10. So we're going back to the car the short way, which is uh, about two or something. But this one is a very uh, long uphill climb. So we should end up getting some really good exercise. So we've now got to the part of the trail where we're climbing more seriously. And I'm using my fitness tracker and uh, I'm not able to talk much while I do this vlog. So it's saying I'm using 78% of my cardio capacity. And it's only just started. We do these uh, climbs before breakfast and uh, makes getting up and getting away so much easier. Eighty-four percent. When you uh, continue your fast in the morning and do your hike, theoretically your body generates more growth hormone and your muscles develop faster. I think we only have a climb of about 800 vertical feet. Okay, well, there's no point in vlogging when you can't talk, because you're out of breath. <laughs> so, we're kind of up to a local peak, and I'm just looking around at the uh, surroundings here. Those rock faces just look so nice in the morning sunlight. Okay, onward and upward. So we have uh, come up to, uh, this isn't the top, it's just sort of another little crest. But uh, it's very pretty, so we thought we'd stop here, have a break, and although we were fasting, we're actually going to do breakfast. down here. <laughs> Jenny's afraid I'm gonna fall. She's been reading lots of books about people doing stupid things on vacation and dying. So Thank 
Canyon National Park. It's just lots of this kind of wall and then everything else that goes along with it, including those rock formations I just did. It's, it's famous for all of that. The other thing that's rather interesting here, the number of burnt trees. And uh, so sometimes you notice like a great big log laying down. Sometimes you notice a standing tree that's all burnt and dead. Uh, there's a number of combinations. Uh, we believe that's wildfires that have gone through and they kind of, they keep going on all the needles and so on. And then uh, basically the, uh, the fire doesn't sustain itself once it's dropped uh, the log to the ground because it's just one log all on its own. So it doesn't keep burning. So Jenny is um, making up some food. We decided to have some breakfast halfway along the trail because, you know, why not? It's so much easier to pack up the whole um, campsite when you're not doing breakfast or anything. You just get up, pack up, go. It's very, very smooth. And the body seems to be fine with it. Um, so here we are, literally on the edge of a huge cliff with the stove set up, the, the, the propane stove. That's our bear bin. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to undo that if you're a bear, in fact, even if you're a human. And uh, so she, uh, she's putting together uh, some of our dehydrated food to eat. But what a beautiful surrounding. Oh, and the, the other thing is... It's, it's just a nobody here. If you go up, there's a lot of people there. That's right. There's just nobody here. And it's actually reasonably warm, even though it's a bit breezy. I don't understand why you go up and it doesn't get colder. It actually got substantially warmer. Where we were it seemed to be a little... I, it didn't get down to freezing point, but boy, my hands, I couldn't even feel them. They just went totally numb. I just can't get over this view. And there's a backdrop for cooking breakfast. So it's a wee bit of a breeze, so Jenny's got a uh, windbreak up against the stove. They did a good one because he was eating.